this will be a continuation of the first video of things I wish I would have known about the ICANN P9 prior to purchasing it. So I want to talk to you guys about the water issue. The water issue is the fact that water tends to get in through your cable routing port on the top and on the bottom. And it tends to accumulate down here on the bottom bracket. So this is not an issue that is peculiar to just this frame. This happens to um, every manufacturer out there if you're running internal cable routing, even if it's external, water will tend to get in there, whether you go through a creek crossing or you wash your bike at home with a uh, garden hose. The manufacturer chose not to put a drainage port on the bottom. There is one on the chain state, just right there. So water does not accumulate down here, but it does tend to accumulate down here on the bottom bracket. Uh, that could be easily fixed with a small drainage port that's drilled right through the carbon. Although I highly advise against it. Having a drainage port doesn't guarantee the water is going to drain out. Um, my previous bike, as I said, it was a Niner WFO. It had a drainage port right on the bottom bracket shell and water still accumulated in there just because the drainage port tends to gunk up with uh, dirt. Another thing that I want to tell you guys about the bike is if you do choose to run a Super Deluxe on your rear suspension, keep in mind that the Super Deluxe it's a little bit different than the Monarch Plus. The space of the eyelet on the top, as it sits away from the body, the actual damper body and the body of the shock is a little bit shorter than the Monarch Plus. And so the clearance of the shock is just enough not to hit the frame during full compression. But if you choose to keep your funnel meter, or well, this little ring right here, it will hit the frame during full compression. And you'll see that it starts to chip away at the paint. It's not so much noticeable on the drive side as it is on the non-drive side. And I don't think it damages the frame in any way possible. I mean, this is a rubber seal or a rubber uh, O-ring on it. And so all it did was just damage the paint. The carbon is still intact. And so you can eliminate that by uh, just taking the, the sag meter off. I thought at first it was the actual damper body hitting the frame, but the damper body sits just far away from the frame where that's not what it's causing damage to the paint. I wanted to talk to you guys also about the fact that the site calls for a spacing on the back or actually clearance for a up to a 2.3 inch tire. Again, that's something that it's not the case as this is a 2.4 on a 30 millimeter rim. Plenty of clearance back there for uh, those of you that choose to run a wider tire. So the 2.3 that calls for on the site, not the case at all. I haven't had any more problems with the bearings coming loose after I uh, put some thread lock on it and retorque them. Going back to the issue that I listed before on the crank set hitting the swing arm on the back, um, I had a friend tell me that um, if I was to put a spacer right here on the shell of the bottom bracket, it would actually move the crank a little bit outward and so it will move it away from here the problem you have with that is that you won't have enough spacing for your bottom bracket uh, bearing on this side to grab on so it can actually damage the threads if you don't have full insertion in there this is already a 73 bsa bottom bracket and so you do it does call for a spacing on the drive side but not on the non-drive side if you do plan to run anything higher than a 10 speed with a wider range cassette, like I'm running on this one. This is the 1148 uh, Advent X by Microshift. Keep in mind that this is a boost frame. So if you are gonna run a one by, which I think is the only option of this bike, you do have to get a three millimeter uh, offset front chain ring. And there's spacing on the back for up to a 34. This is currently a 32 and the most I would probably want to put back here or in the front is actually 34. A 36 would definitely hit the frame. Get a three millimeter offset, not a six millimeter. Paint itself with the quality of it, I will give it a five out of 10, six out of 10. Uh, just because, you know, it's starting to show some signs of cable wear or cable rub on it right there. Um, I guess you can just put some protective tape on it. I did put some, this is actually a frame kit from uh, Right Wrap. Um, if you go to their site and uh, order one, you'll see that they, you know, it's specific to each bike, but 
they don't have this. If you look for Icon P9, they won't have it on their site. You'll have to actually look for a uh, Evolve Alpha 29 or Evolve Alpha 27, which is exactly the same frame. And one way you can tell is because they laser cut their frame protection to have three millimeter gaps in between each piece. And it took me about five hours to do the whole bike. But once you do it, you can barely notice that it's on there. Only when the bike gets a little bit dirty and grime does get in between the uh, each of the spacing or each of the wedges in between the uh, film. I'll make another video comparing how the bike handles with the Super Deluxe compared to the Monarch Plus uh, when you have the same out of eye and just a slightly longer travel. Um, like I mentioned before, you can put a Monarch Plus 216 by 63 with some offset bushings, get the same out of eye and go from 150 millimeters of travel to 171. And the way, you, the way I figure that out is by uh, getting the actual leverage ratio of the bike. I wouldn't recommend doing anything shorter than a 210 eye to eye as you may actually hit the swing arm with the actual cranks. And so those are the things that I wish I would have known about the bike. Uh, if you guys have any more questions, put them down in the comments down below. Till then, see you out there in the trails.